Hallelujah. Amen. We thank the Lord for today and thank Him for being with us in our various services, in our various churches and fellowships where we have gathered today. And I know that um, there's been a huge blessing across for each and every one of us. So we thank the Lord for um, using His servants today to minister to us. And at every capacity you have served, whether as an old share or you served as the person who signed, or is on Facebook Live, or on Zoom, or you prayed, you've ministered, or you called on the phone, or you ministered to others, or you shared it so that your friends can also watch and bring them in. It's all ministering to the Lord. May Elohim bless everyone today. And we are going to go in to continue with our parables. We've been looking at them. This evening we are going to look at the parable of the unmerciful servant in the book of Matthew chapter 18, 21 to 25. Father, we give you praise and we thank you for what you've done today using various ministers to confirm what you have spoken to all of us individually in our prayer time. And Father, we know we've received strength from you to carry on to the next week. And by the time we gather again um, to be refreshed by you, you will have new revelations and new strength to give to us. Thank you, Father, and we ask this evening that you continue with us and then open up the scripture to us. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 18 from verse 21. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto you until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore the, is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. For as much as he had not to pay, the Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of the servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him, and forgave him his debt. But the same servant went out, and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the troth, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I'll pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his servant, fellow servants saw that he was done, they were very sorry. And they came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgive thee all thy debt, because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his word was wrath, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if you... From your hearts, forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. So, brethren, we are going to look at this parable and then intently because the word of the Lord is the word of the Lord. And then, it looking at it, it has two parties one, the person who is offending and the person who is being offended. And what the Lord has expressly commanded in the Bible, we can't change it. I cannot, it doesn't matter how I feel, you cannot, it doesn't matter how you feel, none of us can do anything about it because when you look at it, it's a righteous thing. So it's now left for all of us to now look into this and pray and ask the Lord to give us the grace. So a discourse on the offenses in the body and we have been told how to deal with it. It's usually a common thing, offenses in the body, it usually comes, even in families, even among siblings, among couples, at work, among colleagues, and everywhere, offenses will surely come. 
as long as we're here on, on earth and we're not perfect, offenses will come. We, as long as we all put all our heads together walking, somebody will step on us, another person's um, um, toes. So let the brother know, as the Bible has said, first of all, let that brother know that, look, what you've done is wrong. And if that will not hear you, call the elders, then the church. That's the pretty the guideline we were given. Let who had offended you know you've offended me. If the person will not hear you, call the brothers to hear. If they will not hear you, then call the church. I pray that all of us will follow this rule to tell your brother. Now, one thing is to tell your brother. Another thing is that your brother doesn't listen to you. But do what you should do. And where it's not being resolved, go for the second level, go for the third level. And I pray that if we all will do this in the churches, you see that the offenses will be reduced. What escalates offenses is when somebody is being um, offended, you don't go to tell the person and then you go back again and talk about it. You should let who had offended you, that's Christian virtue. Don't keep it. Don't keep quiet. As long as that is an offense, let the brother, let the sister, let whoever it is, let them know. Pray about it and say, look, you did this to me and I'm hurting and I didn't like it. And tell them. And let me warn you, it may not come back very well. Some people will immediately tell you, I am sorry. Some people will come back and say, but why are you telling me? Some people will tell you, oh, is that all I did to you? Is that why you're angry? Some people will tell you, oh, is that the way you tell me? These are life examples. People's reaction to your offense will be very different. And in that being different, please, it doesn't still negate what the Bible has said. Will you see that? You will see that it's every day. I'm sure those of you listening online, you are, you are saying, yeah, Pastor Grace, you are quite true. Maybe there's even one I didn't mention that you steal. So it doesn't most times go rosy rosy. That's why the Bible made provision and says, I go for the second level. Get the brethren and the elders in the church. Because when it is resolved, we will not go and take our brothers and sisters to court. Like the Lord says. He says, I Paul even one that says, Why are you each time you're taking your brethren? Is there no one in in, in the church to resolve the issue that you take each other to the court? Is because people have not followed this basic principle. Why there's a lot of gossip and anger and bitterness and offense in the church is because the church has not kept this principle. If a brother comes to tell me, look, this brother had done this to me, it is wise for oh, to say, did you tell him? Have you said anything to him? Okay, have you talked to the elders of the church? And this is where the present church have missed it. And so many lies and anger has festered in the church. Go and tell them. And if they don't hear you, tell the church. And if they don't hear you, then the Bible says, regard that person as an, an unbeliever. Because there's nothing else you can do. And we do get this always. So sometimes this may take time depending on what the situation is. Pray for the brother. Believe the Lord. We don't want Satan to take advantage. Sometimes this process can take a while to resolve. So it also calls for patience. When I mean a while, it can last for years. It can last for years because it's all about so and so, what about it and all that. That, yeah, But he that believeth do not make haste. And I just, and, uh, but, so while this is going, going on, then long suffering and patience will come in. Long suffering comes after patience. And the Lord had been very patient will with us, as the Bible says in Psalm 130, verse 3, it says, If thou, Lord, markest iniquity, O Lord, if thou shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? None of us will stand because it does happen every day. So the Lord is compassionate. So when the Lord was talking about 70 times 7, Peter couldn't understand the teaching. It's quite very hard. Lord, what you're saying is quite very hard. And let's not point and, and, and fingers at Peter I have been in such a situation and I'm like what why would this continue why wouldn't it stop why don't we resolve this issue so the I'm sure inside Peter's heart and it's inside our heart let's not just look at our Peter it will be like oh Lord you don't understand brother Judas 
He's a thief. And I don't know why you've allowed him to keep with us. Um, Brother John and James are quite very angry people and seek positions. Brother, we hear all these things among us. You can say, Lord, can't you see Judas? He's the thief. Send him away. And then the Lord, can't you see James and John? Their anger, you can't. And the brethren, it's quite easy to talk about that. But I want us today to look inwards. Sometimes the Lord allows you to pass through these. And for those of us who preach, the Lord will allow you to go through the toughest of situations that you will look up and say, and all those things are, if you're going to be the preacher, if you're going to be the one who to tell others, you must first of all make sure you're delivered before you can send it out to others. And sometimes the Lord allows you to go through the toughest so that you can also understand what your brethren are going through. So that when you stand on the pulpit, you're preaching, you're also considering, and you're not just them um, hauling out words like that with no meaning. Because you can come and stand on you forgive, and if you don't address whatever is out there and don't see how they are doing, you might not be able to help them. And someone out there who is not as spiritual as you are can help them. They can't even go to books. There are so many books written out there on psychology, on philosophy, very powerful books on how people can overcome offense. And I was reading it and I said, how many preachers have taken time to allow the Lord to minister to them so that they can teach this very well. No wonder people go out there to go for psychologists to go and read those books. It's just because we have not taken time to really decode it, dissect it, and bring it out so that brethren can have comfort. If you go on higher, 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 holier than thou, or just take it or leave it, people will not be defined. They will still keep hurting because there are certain things that we have not touched in their lives. So, brethren, when we are teaching this, it's not only enough say, 70 times 7, just keep forget, just um, forgive, and just all that. No, there's a better way to do it. There's a better way to pull people out and say, I know you are hurting. I know what you are going through. I can understand where you are coming from. You know, people will be more settled if they know you know what they are going through. If they know you can feel their pains. If they know that they will feel it more. And at the end of the day, after going through it, you can then tell them and say, but despite all these things, look at what the Bible has said. So why healing has not really happened is because people are in positions that they shouldn't have been in. Or they are not qualified to do it. But they take their time to talk to people. And they, everybody can cancel. But ask yourself, am I qualified to give that particular counseling? Or because I am a titled person, I am bishop, I am apostle, I am prophet, evangelist. I, what you are doing, is it just to fill your position? Do you have the experience? Can you talk life into the people? Or you just tell them, oh, leave it at that. If you tell them to leave it at that, they will go hurting because you have not sat down to get scriptures. And sometimes it may be the life of Yeshua. Sometimes it may be the life of those who went through. Sometimes it may be your own example because that's why the Lord allows us to go through all these things. And when you're talking it, people will know that um, it, re it, that it resonates with you. You know where they're coming from. So may the Lord help us to be in a better place to really touch the lives of people, talk to them and those who are hurting and we don't um, brush it over on the surface and then uh, condemn them when actually, if we do that, we ourselves will fall into that trap. Although we might try to cover it up and live in denial, but may the Lord help us. So he says that, um, let's continue. Also in the church, you can also see that some things may come up, you know, offense like, oh, brother, Master, can you see John, James, James and John? They're quite very selfish. How can they want to sit at the right and another one at the left? Why, what do they mean? Well, why would them, James and, the same James and John and Peter want to build three tabernacles so that you stay up there with them? What happens to nine of us downstairs? Such things may even come up. You know, Brother Philip may even ask some annoying questions like show us the Father. Even after Jesus has said that believe in me also be, I mean my father's house are many mansions I am going I am an each in John chapter 14 Jesus just finished explaining and brother Philip just says show us the father I'm not a question even after being explained brethren such things can happen 
So Peter is like, Lord, you don't know what is happening. The people out there are very wicked. Look at all the accusations and ridicules that they've made of you. Look at Herodias and then Herod. They've cut off um, um, John the Baptist's head. Do you want us to still forgive them? Look at the scribes and Pharisees. All that they've been lying in wait against you. Do you still want us? That was why Peter asked that question in verse 22. And then says, ah. And he came to him and says, how often? Because um, Peter thought maybe it would be 10 times or 20. But the Lord answered him 70 times 7. 450, 90 right. times. So it means that if you're keeping record like people like me who can remember things that happened when they were three years old, you are going to write all of them detailed. I, I can tell you exactly how it is happening because it's not just repeating your words. It comes to my eyes and the, the picture comes. I'm the kind when I was young, I'm going in for exams. My, my Actually, my textbook will come up in front of me and I will be flipping over. That's the kind of memory. So I do remember explicitly. You see, people like us will ask this question that Peter has asked. Do I do it once or twice? Because um, I can remember vividly how it happened. So the Lord says 70 times 7. And then he says to him, a certain good man. And then uh, when he finished, he says, bound him and put him. You know, a lot of people don't want to talk about um, hell any way and any time. But Matthew chapter 18 was Yeshua's discussion with the disciples on offenses and how to deal with it. So note it. So this discourse was not with the multitude, but with the disciples. It was with the disciples. It was with the church. It was with the leaders. It was with the deacons, the deaconesses, whatever you call that 12 group. That's what they are. They were the church at that time. So anyone coming into church thinking that offenses will not happen, you get it right. You get it wrong. Absolutely wrong. Anyone thinking, oh, I have had expectations. Don't be like Pastor Grace Akalono because I've been in situations where I have had high expectations and never expected anything, but it did happen. So, brethren, we should know that it must happen. And then even in that high expectation, why would we even do that? That's what the Lord said to me. Why would you ever expect your fellow human being to be out there when you yourself can also offend? So, brethren, let's look in how we who start getting it wrong. It's, the Bible says we shouldn't esteem anybody higher than they are. So, problem starts with us. When we esteem people higher than they are, then you'll be disappointed. Then you'll be offended. Then you will get angry when they don't meet your expectations because you've not put them at the level where they should be. So, in verse 1, they started with who is the greatest in the kingdom. And the Lord said to them, well, they were expecting uh, maybe it would be Peter, the class monitor. He says, no, it is still the little ones, the children. And then they didn't get the answer they wanted. They asked who it is and then, and then the greatest. And he's talking to them about forgiveness and then offenses. So the Lord knows there is something more to their lives than position seeking. He knows there is more. They are talking about positions and the Lord is like, uh -uh. I know you are talking about that, but I know what is in your heart. I know that the offenses will come. So I better address the, that offense and how it will come. So anyway, the greatest is like one, is one like a child who is simple, uncomplicated, forgives, bears no ill, have no racism in mind, kills no one, antagonizes no one, and most importantly, gets on. So a child's greatest quality is the ability to let go of every offense. A child will go wrong as you tell him off, okay? A, a, a child will do wrong, and as you tell him off, he will still lift up his hands and ask to be carried. He will still tell, tell you he's hungry. Destiny is laughing now because he will still come even after you give him a very hard look and then um, very quite um, strong words. He will still come. And then uh, ask, what can you do? That's what we know children for. So he will still tell you he is hungry. He will still come back to tell you funny things. And then we still come back to finish his school story when he didn't get to finish because 
you were busy being angry with him. I have got them five, and I can tell you these. You are telling them off, they'll give you some few minutes. And then after you come down, they still come back because they've not delivered their message. They've not got what they want. And they'll still come back and say, Mom, I said, yes, what do you want? He says, um, oh, as if nothing happened. Brethren, that's it. So I wrote here that destiny will get on on his siblings and we still get, get you know, to, you know, the gods to ask them to sleep with, if he could sleep with them. Of course, you know what that means. At night, he'll carry his pillow from one room to the other. They'll say, get off. And he'll come back to me. Mom, they, nobody wants me. And I say, just stay there. Go to your own bed. Why do you want to go and sleep with them? So, brethren, these are children. They forget everything that has happened. I pray the Lord will help us. Amen. I pray that these teachings, as it's come to me today, come to you today, because offenses will surely be there. Mind me, what I'm saying is not that they will not come. Even the very sore one. That will rip your heart apart. It will happen. And then, sorry, it may not come from who you think is your enemy. Or someone you can't talk to. Sometimes they can come from the very closest. And it can, what can you do? There's nothing you can do. You can't plug your eyes out. You can't plug your nose out. You can't take one of your teeth and say, you go. Or cut off one ear and say, you go. It's still part of your body. So, brethren, I just want to... While I'm teaching these, I want to balance it so that no one says oh, all these preachers talk about offenses. They don't really understand what's going on. So I want you to know that I do and I've been through it and it's by God's grace. And that grace is still sufficient. And it's sufficient for you today. It's also sufficient for me. And until we live here, his grace is sufficient. He's the one that is teaching these that offenses will come. So in verse 6, if you receive these ones, you have received me. But if you offend them because of their humility and Christ-likeness, then it is better a male stone is hanged about their neck and drawn at the sea, to the depth of the sea. You know, some people take advantage of, you know, brethren at church who are so simple and weak and then uh, uncomplicated. They try to, you know, pry on them. They try to, you know... In, um, dominate them, they try to tell them things, try to, don't do that in the house of the Lord. That that sister is not talking a lot, so quiet and going about his business does not mean that you should come and take over their lives in the church. But the Bible says, that, it says there is woe to the world, but more woe to the man that the offenses will come from. So brother, you see why we should forgive. Why we should, that's the ministration of the Lord. So it's not like the person is going to say, says, leave it with me. Woe unto the person. Because offenses will surely do what they will come. So if you delight in causing offense, there is a woe already because you want others to stumble. Brethren, please, let's not make other people to stumble. When you are in the church and you are not being part of the church, you make brethren to stumble. When you are there and everybody is giving a friend, you are not given whatever your reason is. They will notice it and they are going to complain. You are making your brother or your sister to stumble. When they are all coming out to be part of church work and you don't come and you will be so bold to write it on your WhatsApp group or Facebook page and says, I am busy, I am at work, I can't come. They are busy too, they are at work too. Brethren, you don't write such offensive thing. It's not boldness. Not at all. You know, some people are so bold to give excuses. Or, oh, I can't come because my job is... And others have already taken excuse at work to make sure that they come to serve the Lord. You're not showing good example. And when you're doing such things, you're causing offense in the house of the Lord. Probably it may be a mannerism that you keep doing and you don't want to do anything around it and you're like just accept it yes the people will try and ask god for grace to keep enduring but think about yourself who is the offender because the bible says woe unto the person you know some people maybe knowingly or knowingly they cause offense but happy are you if you are told you are causing offense withdraw from that Brethren, let's look after each other in the church. Let's help each other to make it to heaven. Let nobody be a stumbling block 
by being, to, you know, keeping to your own ideas and to your own will and casting, especially in among us, brethren, what do we do? We, 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 we take spirituality and try to make others feel, especially in these days, the Lord said to me, God told me, everybody's God told me, God, what you're doing is offensive. How can he tell you what to do? And then you're offending everybody and you kept doing it. I pray the Lord will help us. Because when somebody tells you God said, you can't say anything again. Because you don't want to offend the Holy Spirit. And you take your hands off. And you are looking. Please, brethren, let's be very careful. Because when emotion leads us or you're doing anything and God did not tell you and you're doing it, it's only on the last day. So, brethren, I try, I'm trying to balance this message. So that it will not be like it's a hammer. You must do this. If you don't do this, this will happen to you. Or this. No. But if we understand how it's coming, it will help us to endure. It will help us to tolerate. It will help us to accommodate. So some people are in the church. Only offense. Please do not be an offense to your brother or to your sister. You are not going to help them to grow spiritually. We are here to help one another grow. Don't come to the point that you put a blind eye to the spiritual growth of others. He says, well, if you can't get on with it, that's your business. Or if you do this, then it means that you're heading to nowhere. You can't get that. No, the Bible says we should bear with one another. There are the weak ones among us. There are the strong ones among us. If my meat will make my brother to stumble, I eat no meat. Meat is good. Meat is protein. And actually it's very expensive. If you want to get the lean steak without the, those with fat. So meat is enjoyable. And if you're going to get the fat ones and barbecue them, they give you more taste. Because the fat makes you know the meat more tasty. But the Bible says, if my meat will make my brother to stumble, I eat no meat. So there's no need carrying on on doing things and people are offended and you carried on and close your eyes. You don't care and they're falling out of faith and they're dwindling. In. You say, sort yourself out. You yourself sort, know what you're doing. It's not charity. He says, every other thing may fail. Prophecy will fail. All those things, speaking in tongues may fail. All those things. But what will not fail is what? Love. On both sides on both on the offender and the offended love on both sides that's why jesus says talk to each other we're unable to talk to each other invite someone in where you can invite someone in go to the church where you can invite and after these levels nothing happened remind leave the brethren as what an unbeliever but we don't get there before we regard each other as unbelievers before we regard each other did there another person here did we ever try Brethren, this is for the church. So, brethren, why will you obey Satan? You know, when we're looking at this, it says, So take heed, as the Bible says in Romans chapter 6 16, know ye not that to whom ye yield your servants to you know to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey, whether it be of sin or death or obedience unto righteousness. So please, offenses will surely come, both to the offender and to the offended. Please don't give Satan any room. Why the offended is making time to pray and ask God for grace to carry on to forgive. The offender should also pray that the Lord should give them the grace not to repeat this. If I step on my brother's toe and it hurts them and they say stop stepping on my toe. Please don't say I stepped on sister A's toes. It didn't hurt them. Step on brother A's toes. It didn't, it didn't hurt them. Actually this group of people came so that I can step on their toes. So what is wrong with you? Brethren were created differently. You don't know whether they have oppression on that leg. You don't even know whether they have injury on that leg. You don't even know the way they are created. If just if only offense may cause another thing and condemn that leg. So why would you insist that A, B, C, D likes it? So why is it that you didn't like it? That's an offense. It comes from Satan. The Bible says, don't. At the, at the open gate, they will say, don't take offense, don't give. Do not take, do not give. So don't take and don't also do what? Give. So anyone that obeys and then if you carry on and carry on and carry on and you don't deal with the unforgiveness, you've given Satan a chance. And you carry on and carry on and then you don't stop the offense because you thought the other one is the one to go to hell, you also will be in danger of hell. So verse 11, he had come to seek that which was lost. So it was not 
so it is not um you know about you know any man should do what to die but all of us to live in titus 2 14 to 17 it says that the grace of god has appeared to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust we should live soberly in this righteous life and why because christ gave himself and redeemed us from all iniquity. Let's pray that the Lord will redeem us from all iniquity. Overt and covert ones. But the ones we don't know. Sometimes we may be as old as Abraham and Ephraim. And gray hair will grow. And we don't even know there's gray hair. And we're only seeing what we're seeing on in um, um, on the mirror. But here, a lot of, it says there is everlasting fire for that which offends. So even if your feet cut it off some people out of sentiments has allowed offense it will hurt your soul it will ask me i will tell you it will hurt you so badly don't go there it is real it is demonic because the offense is meant to offend you did you get that if you get that it will help you the offense was prepared satan actually used that thought to do what offend you so it goes to deliver the message it doesn't carry a good message it's carrying a hot coal to and it's coming to you if you accept it it will do what it wants to do if you push it back or you've allowed it without knowing please continue in prayers continue in humility continue on calling upon the name of the lord until he wishes it off so brethren so um and um, it, it will hurt your soul it will get you into temptation of counting and struggling to forgive. Especially when Satan sees, ah, if I do this to this person, he will not, she will not forget. The thing will now start happening to the terrible state. And Satan knows what, what he's doing. So since this offends you, he'll keep bringing it. He'll keep in various forms. In very, at a point, the person offending you may ask you to hit yourself on the rock. There's nothing I'm going to do about it. And that's offense for you. That's Satan coming. So get yourself out of the offending environment. Sometimes you can do it spiritually and sometimes you can do it physically. If you linger, what happened to Lot and family will kick in. You will become a pillar of salt. You will not be able to come out of Sodom because Paul, um, Lot didn't. Even though the, the wife became a pillar of salt, his, his daughters committed a iniquity with him. They didn't get out of Sodom. So, brethren, our Lord Jesus, when they took him, the crowd took him and wanted to take him to the cliff to push him down. He didn't stay there and says, well, I'm the Messiah. You can't do it. The Bible says he withdrew himself from that crowd. That's one of the things. Don't stay in your face and start claiming and speaking in tongues and prophesying. It will not work. It will swallow you up. Remove yourself. Spiritually, you can blank it out. And blank out if you can't remove if, if you can't remove yourself physically, spiritually, you can blank it out. The Lord will give you the grace to do it. So some of us, fear of what to eat, security and whatever, please don't let the Lord guide you in all things. He will give grace or make a way of escape depending on the situation and our prayers. The Lord will surely deliver us. So brethren, remember, this man was forgiven but because he did not forgive his fellow servant, he failed the principles of forgive us our trespasses, even as we forgive those who trespassed against us. So we've taken time to look at the offenders. Now the offended. Now the Bible is saying, you will fail the principle of forgive us our trespasses, even as we forgive those who trespass against us. He failed. If you do not forgive others their trespasses, how will your heavenly father forgive you? That's the word of our creator, the one that wrote the scriptures. This is his own word, the one that made us, that redeemed us. He's just there if you will not. So that's why for every one of us who is spiritual, if it is the battle, you are going, if it is the fasting and prayer, if it is the staying all night to pray and asking, stop all these 21 mountains you are asking for skyscrapers. Pray this out of your life even if it's what you do for the rest and rest of your life defending it god will really do it there is grace to do it so unbelievers want to eat their cake and have it back they're very selfish you know them 
they put it in their mouth, they still want it on the table. But why will any Christian ha who has become, who has come to the been to the cross, remain an instrument in the hands of Satan to offend others or to receive the offense? Please, have you forgotten the race is not about is not about one person; it's about all of us. To making sure that we all make it. Make sure your children make it. Make sure your husband make it. Make sure your wife make it. Make sure the brethren in the church make it. Let's make sure. By the, that's why the Bible says, let no one look to his own things, but in love, in humility, submitting ourselves to one another. Just as the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, even to husband and wives, he says, submit yourself to one another. And then he says, wife, submit in all things. Then husband, love as your own flesh. You know, when you see preachers trying to elevate one more than the other, they, they forgot that they were initially brothers and sisters in the church. Initially, they were not husband and wife. They started with, and then when they come in, then it should be blissful by the grace of Elohim. And in it, brethren, when we take all these things, so brethren, have you forgotten the race is not for all, it's for all of us. Have you forgotten that our wash should be seasoned with salt and we should, you know, do things that edify. It is selfish that makes us, it is selfishness that makes us forget that our actions can offend others. It is carelessness. You know, when we're so much in ourselves and when we're so much in, you know, we are too righteous, we know it, you forget it's carelessness. Please, brethren, let's all each day, each time, make sure that we make for peace. We carry on. Don't continue what you're doing. We can cover it up with all spiritualities, but heaven knows that it is not right. There are those who can, can take it. Not everyone can eat radish. Not everyone can eat kiwi. So each time you do salad, fruit salad and you add kiwi, and you expect everyone to eat. Why don't you put kiwi in a separate plate? So those that are allergic to it will not go and pick it up. Not mix it up and then say, but why wouldn't you take it? Everybody tolerate it. It's only you. No, you are the offender. Because if you had asked the Lord, you would have been, you know, very considerate to make sure that the plate of kiwi is in, an, the kiwi is in another plate. And not mixed up so that brother... Or sister can also enjoy the fruit salad like others. Brethren, when you talk about offense, I, my prayer is that we will all be diligent. All the Bible is saying to us is, look, look not to yourself. Let each one look out for their brother and sister. Let all of us make sure we make things that will keep us moving. Why would you go to heaven and your brother or sister will go to hell? What, what, what gain do you have in it? Why would you? And of course, you know, you're not going. And if you're offending or you're taking the offense yourself. So don't be careless. Don't look at yourself only. Those who are not born again do not understand what we're talking about. They have not given their lives to the Lord, but they quote scriptures out of context. If anyone reads the whole of Matthew 18, I cannot ask that question because the answers are all there. So... This man was forgiven. I let them, Destiny and Elect and I were computing it in today's, um, in today's um, currency and the worth of it. He was forgiven 9.76 billion. That's what he was forgiven. 9.76 billion. I've not seen such a money in my life. If I see it, I don't know if I'll recognize it. 9.7 i can recognize it in figure and in paper but physical cash i've not seen it that was what he squandered so brethren whether he broke the bank of his manager to steal it we don't know whether he spent it on a holiday <laughs> with cruise and private jet or maybe he went um to the space on one trip with it we cannot tell how he uh, you know accumulated such debt whether it took him several years, we can't tell. Whether he went to New York or came down to London to buy Canary Wharf with that money, we cannot tell. All we knew is that he spent 9.676 billion. And what did his servant, his fellow servant, owe him? His fellow servant owe him equivalent of one pound. One pound only 
one pound is about um in US equivalent is about is it one fifty now or one forty or one seventy? That's all dollars. Then convert it to your own currency. You know, in some countries you buy nothing with their one pound again or their one naira or their one anything. You cannot buy. That's all he owes, but this man owed nine point seven six. So it is not about the um, them, it's not about the, the uh, he who forgives, but it is the wickedness in the heart. It is the wickedness in the heart. And it's just going. And remember, the soul that sin it shall die. There is a lake of fire, that lake that burns with fire and brimstone. And people are not afraid. So people want to live in disobedience, but quote the scriptures at will. The question is, the person, did you read? Matthew chapter 18 finish it all so why would you skip 7 verse 7 to 10 and then talk about verse 22 why would you talk about the offense and how much and why would you skip offenses will come so if you read the whole of Matthew 18 before you come to this parable you will balance it out and to summarize today please don't give offense and please don't take offense. Do not take. It can trap you. It can keep you. It can make you empty. It, when I mean empty spiritually, you'll be empty. You'll be looking for it. You will struggle with it. So for you who is offended, please, as much as lie it in you, know that if you allow this, you are allowing demon to come in. Because the demon wants to come. Is offense okay? Offense is still an offense. Offense will be an offense any day, any time. There's no other word for it. There's no ba baptismal name. There's no pet name for it. There is no, um, um, what do you call it now, good name for it. It's still called an offense. It is meant to offend and it will offend you. So if you're offending, please ask the Lord. Search me, O Lord. Go through me. Help me not to be careless. Help me to be diligent. Help me to look out for my brothers and sisters. Help me to know that what it doesn't matter how persuaded I am with it. It doesn't matter how much I try to justify myself. Your brother says it is ailing me. Stop it. Your sister says it is ailing me. Stop it. Don't make excuse. And you who is being offended, haha, <laughs> please, there is no excuse. Oh, they did this, they did that. I told you, people like me, we can give long reason why we will not forgive and how it is happening. You have no choice. Absolutely no choice. But to do what? Forgive. But to do what? Ask the Lord. If you ask the Lord, he will explain more than the offense to you. He will even show you the brother needs help, the sister need help. But because we elevate people more than they are, we wouldn't say it. That's why when the offenders will say, but why would you do it? You should have known. They don't know. That was why they did it. If they know, they wouldn't do what they've done. So, brethren, we can pray from that aspect. That will help us to settle very quickly. When you put people in their right place, you can pray. And also, you look inwards to also say, am I the type that when things happen, I can record it in my memory? And then you also pray that, Lord, please, I want to keep the good memories. The bad ones, wipe it off me because this will trap me. This will keep me in danger. So, brethren, either way, today, the plan of Satan is to make sure that we stab each other. To make sure that we don't make it to heaven. So, look out for your brother. Look out for your sister. Look out for your children. Look out for your spouses. Look out for your neighbors. Look out for everyone. And make sure that when we come together, we can really have communion. When we come together, we can listen to each other. We can let go. We can allow ourselves. Brethren, don't run off. When you run off and expect others to run after you, you're going to offend them. Your speed may be too much for them. Are you going to tell them then if you're not coming after me, you can drop off and go? I am running because I need to meet a target. You have no target to meet without your brother or your sister. The doors of heaven will just chop until you go get them. Because he says, go ye into the world and make disciples of all nations. You want to have downlines on the last day. You want to look back. There were people following you. You need to nurture them as a shepherd nurtures sheep. So brethren, ask the Lord to reveal first yourself who you are, whether you're the offender or the offended. As the Lord does that, you start dealing with yourself first. And things you can see, open up so that you can be told. 
You know, sometimes we don't know ourselves. But we should be open for people to tell us who we are. Don't get angry when you're told who you are. Go to the Lord in prayer, ask for forgiveness, and say to the person, how do I do to improve this? Because we're all looking for solution. I pray that this parable will teach all of us, the church, on how to make sure that we keep one another. Please, don't give Satan room with offense. Don't give him room by feeling offended. Either way, it is not. Let's be a house of love where we look out for each other, where we listen to each other because the problem is superiority complex. It does happen. And when superiority complex happens and when the old man returns and when we feel the other person can't have their way, nothing will happen. But when we listen, when we hear and where we cannot, please let's invite the elders. Where the elders cannot, let's invite the church. And where the church cannot resolve it, then you put your hands up. There's nothing you can do. The Lord will take over from there. But don't give offense. Don't take offense. We're going to pray now. And in the next five minutes, Apostle will be coming up. So still, hang on. Just take a cup of tea, water, stretch your legs and come back. Father, we give you praise for this parable. Thank you, Lord, for you've opened our eyes today to look into this. That this servant was forgiven a lot. That he was unable to forgive and you balanced it even from the um the scriptures that were earlier on the verses that offenses will come therefore father help us even as your children not to allow it either by giving it or by taking it give us grace to be there for one another to love one another to look out for one another to care for one another to make heaven to make sure satan doesn't steal anyone Oh Lord, let's come to the point that we don't we don't go to the point that we don't care what happens to the other person. Is your business come around it or take it? Or the person who is being offended will come to the point and says, Oh, I can't because you're offending, you go to hell. No. Help us to know that either way is a switchblade attack and doesn't work. Help the church to take the right steps. Help us, Lord, to also see the right way in Yeshua. Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.